Welcome to Clash in the Castle. Oh my goodness. What the hell did I just see? Now, I know some of you are probably wondering what happened to the Rampage and Smackdown review. Guys, I'm sorry. Something came up and I got distracted. Badly distracted. I was not myself. But I did have enough mindset to make sure I see this show. I, I, I did not want to miss this. Not because I thought it was going to be the best thing. I just wanted to make sure I got some content for you guys. Because I don't like breaking my word. I like bringing content because next to I love wrestling. I don't like letting you guys down. And this is like... What did I just see? A good show with a sing-along. That's what I'm going to call this video. That is what it is. This was not an ordinary show. This was the first pay-per-view that Triple H is in full control of as creative, the head of creative. That's what this was all about. It wasn't the fact that this had been built up greatly. It wasn't that great in its build. Because we transitioned from Vince to Triple H. The question was, now that Triple H took over, was he able to change the format to make it interesting? Yes, he did. But it was weird. I don't know how anyone else is going to see this, but it was weird. Now, I did not see the kickoff show. Sorry, guys. So I don't know what happened there. So I'm only going to talk about the main card. We had a six-woman match. We had Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, and Oscar versus Bailey, oh, the Dakota Kai cutie. And, 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 and why do they have to call her? Eo Sky. Why couldn't they just call it Eo Shirai? I think really they should change her back. Maybe, maybe Hunter would change her back. Was this a good opener? Well, I don't know what happened in the kickoff, so I'm hoping this was a good open to you. The crowd at Cardiff was pretty lukewarm at first and then built up afterward. Took them a few minutes for me personally. But by the end of it, you had Bailey pinning a Bianca Belair. Now, was that the wisest thing to do? I don't know if it was. But it's it on paper it seems to be the best thing. The question's going to be how are they going to book Bailey from now on? We know that Bailey's still kind of messy in the ring. She was like I said when she had her first match back, she was sloppy, but she knew how to hide some of it. Here She's a, still a little sloppy, but she knew how to be able to hide some of it. The question is going to be how they're going to book her going forward. This is where it gets interesting. That's the question. Second match, which was the second best match of the night for me because over in Carter, it was 7 o'clock when they started. I think 6 or 7 o'clock. That is the IC title match with the Imperium Reunited. Yes, Imperium has now been fully reunited. Wise. Gunta versus Sheamus. Sheamus was over as fuck. Sorry for that one, if that was a little deep. <laughs> oh, my throat is all messed up. <coughs> Still having allergy problems. And I did see someone's... Somebody left a comment saying, What you need is honey from a pollenized beehive. Sounds great. But I live in New York, in the Bronx. 30 miles out of New York to go to a place like that to get honey? Unless I ordered on eBay, I ain't going out of 30 miles out of New York. But I did try to check on eBay, and I'm going to check again. They seem to have certain things that pollinize honey. See if that might be helpful. I might try to see if I can check it. But they had a lot of honey online. Maybe I might be able to find one. But this match was excellent. They beat the living... Sh let, hold it. Let me wind back. Shame is coming out with Holland. And I'm not calling him... I'm not calling him Butch. I am calling him Pete Dunne. Because he sounds better as that. They had the rock star treatment. They were so hot. I kind of wish that... Similar to Drew, and I'll get to that in a minute, I would have liked to see Seamus come out on his original music because I think that one would have been better than the current one. That would have been better. I think he would have got an even a louder pop 
if he came out in a Irish song that he had. I think that would have been better. That's just me. Gunther came out with Imperium. Then you got Imperium fighting with the Bruisers. And you still see pretty much Gunther and Sheamus not touch each other until the ring bell went off. And that's when it went off on each other. And these guys look. I don't know when Sheamus ripped open his shoulder. It was here. I think he might have gone to the ring with it. I'm not sure. I don't think he did. But after the match, you can see scars. You can see redness. You can see blood just showing up on both of them. Mostly on Sheamus. The 10 bells of the Bowery was attempted about three times for Sheamus. Didn't get away with it. Later it did. I did enjoy that the crowd really made it important. But Gunther always kept cutting them off. And Gunther always was at least two steps ahead. I truly felt this was the match of the night. Honestly, from the ending... All right, hold it. Here's where it gets a little confusing. Legitimately, this is the second best match of the night when it comes to wrestling. The last match of the night is for entertainment persons purposes, even though it was very good wrestling, this was the best wrestling match. That one was the most entertaining match because of what the story was telling. Sheamus really busted his ass in this one, and these guys tanked each other. They were exhausted by the end of it. I think it was almost a 25-minute match, 20 to 25 minutes. It was that long. These guys busted their ass, but in the end, Sheamus did not lose, win. The reason I botch here is I kind of wish Sheamus had won because the IC title is the only title he's never claimed. And it would have been nice pretty much in, in Wales. It would have been nice. But since Drew was trying to do the same thing, one of the two had to job. Now, I know what happened with Drew. Yes, we know. We know. But not knowing who is going to win, this is the best option. You don't know if both of them, one of them is going to win. So one of them had the job in the very beginning. It, it had to happen. It had to. There was no way they were going to let Sheamus win against Gunther here. And it was the right choice. Even though I would have liked to see Sheamus win, it made sense that Gunther do it. And particularly if they're going to do another match at the next pay-per-view. I don't know which one that is. Can't remember. But if the next pay-per-view is coming up and they're going to face each other again in about a month, it would make sense. I'm just saying. Now, the next match, which I don't understand the ending. I don't. This is a match I believe they messed up on. I don't care if it was Triple H who booked it. I don't care if it was Bruce Pitcher. I don't care if it was Vince himself. I do not agree with the match. And that is... Huh, Lip Morgan versus Shayna Baszler for the SmackDown Women's title. Look, I don't hate Lip. She busted her ass for the last couple of years to try and improve herself in the ring, to get better ring skill, and by the time she finally did win the title, she did improve her mic skills to a point and worked on the character. I'm not saying she did great work, but I am saying that she did bust her ass doing it. She did. She improved to the point where people still loved her so much. But seeing her, and even though they tried to hype up, that she worked with Matt Riddle to try and get a little bit of MMA skill in. The problem for me is, if there was no video packages showing her working with a Matt Riddle, that means nothing. Now, mind you, I didn't see SmackDown. I did. So I don't know if she did do it. So there's no way of knowing if they did show a video package of it or not. If they did, then fine. I kind of wish they had built a couple of weeks into it but if it was only one video package, it would have been at least something. Here, hearing her say that she did it meant nothing. Yes, she tried submission. Yes, she tried holds. That were normally outside what she would normally do. So I won't say she's trash. But when you looked at this match, legitimately looked at it, it was very slow paced. Even for Lip Morgan, it was like she was trying very hard to remember what she had learned to, or... To really make it mean something. And the match which should have been here. Went down to here. It was a slower paced match. Which looked telegraphed. 
which did not help Shayna Baszler, who is usually methodical. When she does her work, she's not fast either, but there's a purpose behind how she wrestles compared to Liv Morgan, who's a bit faster than her. And when Liv slowed down, it messed up the match for me personally. It made no sense for her to do submission and try to copy a Shayna Baszler in certain ways. Trying to do an arm bar, trying to do a try to do a, a sleeper coquilla clutch. It just didn't make any sense. And when she put the arm bar on Shayna Baszler, really messed up the match for me. You're telling me Shayna's going to be so easily weakened by already an injured Lip Morgan on her arm already. No. She shouldn't have been able to even hold the arm bar long enough to really do anything since she hurt her so much. But it happened and Shayna lost. I do not understand. Also, Shayna had a cut right here just above her head when the match was going on. I don't know when she got it. But it was a nasty right there, right along there. But guys, mm -mm. I didn't like this match. It was not paced right. When it came to Lib, she won. And I look, I love me Lib. She worked hard to get where she is and people do like her. But Shayna should have won. It makes no sense for her to keep that title. It doesn't. When it comes to Vince, honestly, he didn't really care that much about her. Now you got Triple H taking her. Maybe he's saying, you know what, we need to keep it on her. Maybe we can improve her. But at this point, it would have been better for her to drop it and then do the improvements while Shayna was holding it to try and change her out. Not while she's champ. That's just me, guys, sitting below. <sighs> Next. The match that I'm happy about. Not that the match was bad quality. I'm happy at the outcome, and that is Judgment Day versus Edge and Ray Ray. With a Rhea Ripley and Dom at ringside. I got on my notes because it was near the end of the match, and the match was fine. You could see that Ray and, well, how can I say this? Most of the match was fine when Ray did his stick in and when Edge did his stick. When they tried to do combination, some of it hit, some of it missed. And I think it's due to the fact they haven't really wrestled that much in tag teams in a while. And they only just started. So it takes a little time to get some chemistry. If they do it more often, I bet you most of the chemistry where they were off a little bit will straighten itself out. Because they used to tag together. Here, it kind of hit and miss a couple of times where it seemed to be a little sloppy. And particularly when, when you see Edge try to do a sift. I'm sorry why I'm botching. Seeing a 619 from an edge, and he didn't even get his legs on top of the second turn rope to get Finn in the face, shows he needs practice. That means they need to work together. That means he needs to practice that move if he does it a little bit more. That's the way it goes. If you're going to do it more often. I'm hoping he does, because if they tag together, maybe they become tag champs. It will be a change to see Ray Ray and Edge to go after the tag titles and go up against the Usos. I'm just saying eventually. But this is where it gets interesting. I believe I'm putting shots in. You can see it in my face. You see Ray Ray, Ray Mysterio, get his clock clean by Dom because when the match was over, and yes, Judgment Day... The... the Read. When you see Edge and Rey Mysterio win, I'm going, why? Why? Why would you do that? And just before my notes, I wrote down, Dom needs to turn heel. I actually wrote it the eight minutes before the match ended. You see him in the ring. <coughs> and I don't have to shot him nut shotting a Dom nut. Showing it again. Of him laying out his father. After he nut shots a edge. And you can see Ray Mysterio saying. What are you doing? What are you please Dom calm down. What are you doing? He's going like this. Almost praying to his, bro his son. And begging him to stop. And then he lays his ass out. When he says okay dad. Okay dad. Bang. Lays him out. Yes. This is what Dominic has been needing for a while. As a face, he sucks. I'm sorry. Yes, 
he did earn his marks or like a year, two year and a half ago when he had to have that match. I forgot who was the one he had that match where he was getting literally his butt kicked. And I think it might have been, um, who was it? I think it might have been Baron Corgan. I'm not sure who it was. Where he was getting beat up so many times. Over and over and over again. Getting laid out. I think it might have been Baron Corbin. Or who was it? It also could have been. No, no. It couldn't have been um, Randy Orton. Because Ray didn't work with Randy much back then. But he got his ass cleaned a lot. Beat up bad. To show that he really means business working in this industry. So I gave him props for getting his ass kicked on TV. Literally, he was getting his ass kicked. He was getting beat up bad. So finally, someone decided to pull the trigger on this. And I thank you. Thank you, Triple H. He needed it because I was tired of him. I'd rather him go back to NXT. I did not want him on Raw. I did not want him on SmackDown. He was garbage. But now here... Counting on how he's booked in Judgment Day is going to be interesting, particularly if he's going after Rhea as his woman. Or basically having Rhea be, having him as her woman. Yeah, I said that. Because she said, I'm his poppy, I'm his daddy. Why not let her be the dummy mommy and have him do everything that she wants? And he be attentive to her. Because she's got him under the finger because he likes that craziness, that New Zealand piece of ass. I'm just saying. Now, the next match that had a good emotion to it was Seth Rollins and Matt Riddle. I finally did see that video of when they were talking. And then when they had supposed to, the, the camera was supposed to be off, but they weren't. And the emotion that Matt Riddle gave when he was talked about with his wife. And his kids not being seen again because of the divorce. I felt that was very emotional. Yes, it was very good. I admit that. So going into this match, seeing Matt Riddle dealing with Seth Rollins was very good. And what the? I believe I got that shot when you see a Seth Rollins come out. With red wings, horns, and big ass glasses, I know 100% that his wife dressed his ass. His wife dressing because you know Beck. Beck is a nut. She is like one of those weird women that goes by a strange drum. That's how she is. That's how she's always been. That's how she's always going to be. But was the match good? It was good. It was good. I do believe that Matt wasn't as emotional as everyone thought he was going to be. I'm being honest here. I felt he was emotional, but not emotional enough. That was just me. I think he could have been a bit more. Doesn't mean the match was bad. And in the end, Seth won. Seth did win. I believe he did. And Millie, I had to walk away for a minute. When I came back, Seth seemed to be happy. So I'm guessing he won. And I, yeah, yeah, I think he did win. And it makes sense. But the question is, what are they going to do with Matt Riddle now? He lost. So the question is going to be, how are they going to build Matt Riddle into something that is even a better badass than he is now? I'm just saying. Now, let's see what else we got here. The vid pack for Drew was pretty good. And the vid pack for the Usos. Now, the Usos are not in Cardiff because of the DUI. They're not allowed to leave the country. Neither one of them. So, there was no way. They were going to go. So when you see this match of Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns, and I got to say this first. Let me say it first. There was a rumor that had been floating around on YouTube and in the, the community, roughly. Didn't say it's real. But the rumor was that when Vince left, Roman was not happy because they wanted to change the program that he was in. They did not want him to keep the title. They wanted to give it to Drew. And Roman was pissed off about that because he wanted to build up to go to The Rock next year. And with The Rock, after he would have finished with The Rock's program and then dropped the title, he wanted to go into the movies. So he was going to be pissed off if he was going to lose and he was going to walk away and go see 
is his cousin and then go in the movie. Let's be honest. Rome is going. There is no way that Roman Reigns is not eventually going into movies. He's going to go just like his like his cousin and just like when it comes to John Cena, he's going to. He has the range. He can be an actor. He's not going to keep doing what he's doing forever. So the rumor was if he lost, he's gone. He will quit. He will not come back and pretty much WWE will not have Roman again. That was the rumor. And I was wondering, was this rumor true? I didn't know if it was true or not. Because you know rumors are hard to believe in, particularly if none of the other sites talk about it. And none of them did. So when this match happened, you see him coming out by himself. You see him with both titles. I believe I throw that in my face. And then you see how big Drew was. And he came out with the opening of Broken Dreams. I still love that song. I thought if I was going to be an MMA fighter, I'm, I'm not. I wish I had learned more martial arts. I learned very little when I was a teen, like a young kid. I learned a little bit and then I forgot it all because I didn't do the dojo with my friend. Because my I had a friend named Jeff and his dad ran a karate dojo. Unfortunately, there was a falling out between me and him and... Never went and did any martial arts after that. But I had gone to the dojo and he talked about trying to be a white belt and go through it like him. Didn't happen. But when he came out, they played Boken Dreams at first and a nice vid video to go with it. Then he came out in his regular music. I kind of wish he just came out with the actual music. I think that would have been better. A coming full circle type of thing because he started in Europe. And now he has culminated back to Europe with a big-ass title shot. And I think playing that music fully would have been nice. But he gone with the music he's been currently using. It's all right. The match was good. The match was very good. Seeing Roman having to use strategy to, I, I am by myself. The crowd ain't with me. I don't have my, 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 my advisor. I don't have my, my, my cousins. I got no one. I am behind the eight ball, and he was getting frustrated. He was getting angry, and it was going back and forth between the two. And they, that is when I was wondering, was the rumor true? Because you can see so much of how one-to-one -one they were. Once Roman got somewhere, Drew just overpowered him. Once Drew got over on Roman, Roman managed to get back, but that was later in there, but it was still a good balance. Eventually, Kyrian Cross showed up. Which means that Drew may be messing with Kieran Cross soon. And that is when Roman got the better of a Drew McIntyre. That's when it began to become, instead of just Drew almost all the time, it was going one-to-one, one-to-one. -to -one. Drew got an edge, then Roman got the edge. When Roman got speared, Drew speared him right back. When he tried to get to Claymore, it didn't work. He got the Superman punch. It was going back and forth by that time. But by the end of it, Drew decided to do a Claymore to a Roman Reigns where he thought he had him. He thought he pinned him with another spear. It didn't work, and he was screaming at Little Nature. That was the ref. That's what he, what a lot of people call him, like a Little Nature, Ric Flair. Little Nature Boy Ric Flair. I can't remember his name. But when Drew did the Claymore, he knocked the ref out of the damn ring. But guess what? Austin Fury comes down with a ref. He tries to get into the ring. Tyson Fury, who was seen later in the, in the night, decked him and knocked him unconscious so he could not cash in. And the ref that had come in from Austin Fury tried to do one, two, three. It did not work that time. He tried again, and that didn't work. When Drew finally did do the Claymore, he thought he had it. Everyone thought he had it. And then someone comes out from under the ring. And it is Solo Sequoia. I believe his name is Sequoia. From NXT, who is surprising. I keep forgetting. When you look at Usos, Jimmy and Jay, you forget there are more than one Uso. There are four, I believe. You got Jimmy and Jay. Then you have... So Sokoa, and then you got Jason. I believe Jason's also a brother of theirs. Jason Fatu, 
which is working in, where he's working in MLW and had gone to, I believe, Impact Wrestling as well to try and get a title over there from Josh. That was weeks ago. There are four brothers. Four of them. So, Solo pulled the ref out, messed up the count, and then Roman managed to get what he needed, and he won the damn match. And everybody was so deflated, so mad, so everything. And it was well done. We now have finally, at least for the moment, while they're in Europe, Soyo Sequoia, Solo will do the work of Jimmy and Jay until they can get back into the country. And then we'll see if Solo is going to work with Jay and Jimmy and Roman. That's going to be a question. Is Solo coming up to the main roster or was this just a one-time occurrence? I think this might not be a one-time occurrence that he may be ready to go up to the main roster. That's just me. And then, singing time. When it was all over, Tyson Fury gets into the ring and he says clearly to Drew, helps him up off the floor, don't feel shame, man. Don't, no, don't feel shame, mate. You honored us. You worked your ass off and people here love you for it. And I'm proud of you and so is everybody else. And Drew says, I'm not giving up. Just like you and you said, Tyson, you didn't give up. I'm not going to give up until I get those unified titles. And then Tyson. Tyson decides to sing American Pot. <laughs> now you know this is not a Vincent Kenny McMahon show. He would have never allowed that. This is what Triple H allowed. He said to Tyson, look, go, in the room and go into the ring and try something to see if this is going to work. It sounded so strange. The crowd was a little indifferent to it. They didn't know how to feel about it at first. They started getting into it a little bit by the time they started singing another song. I don't remember what the next song was. What was the next song? It was another song. Um, it, it, I can't remember the damn song. It was ridiculous. And that's what made it interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Guys. I'm not going to tell you this is a great show. It was good. But story time was stupid. But it was different. Something spontaneous that Vince would never allow. Now, I'm not telling you to start looking at WWE. If you hadn't already, I'm not going to tell you. Because as it stands, as I've told people before the changeover, do not fall for it. You don't know what's going to happen in the next 12 months. Saying it's going to be smooth sailing is a freaking lie. If you hear just Alex and JD say it, that's on them. That is on them. As I said to one of my subscribers who now notices what's going on in AEW, I said it myself for nearly two years that the women's division sucks flat out. They need to do something. They kept saying, just be patient. What's wrong with you? Just be patient. Just... Just wait. And I said also, the roster is getting too inflated. They're not going to have enough people, enough room for all these people. And everyone said, we got to hire these people. We got to hire these people. Now look what's going on with AEW. They're having issues. And now we got to see what's going to happen all out. If those issues are going to culminate in a bad show. Here, I'm not going to tell you that everything's going to be great. No. We got 12 months to see how the changes will be from Nick, Stephanie, and let's be honest, Paul, Paul Levesque can actually make it better. But that's just me. Peace. Actually, peace. <laughs>